Hi, my name is Boris and in this video I'm going to show you how to warp audio in Ableton. We'll go over warping entire tracks, vocals and drums, even if you don't know your clip's tempo. Before we get into the video, if you like what we are doing on this channel, make sure to subscribe. We've got more content about music production in Ableton coming up. And if you'd like to learn Ableton 12 with all the foundations of music production, check out our beginner to advanced live 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also check out the Everything Bundle Collector's Edition, which includes all courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All right, so let's get started. First of all, before we dive in, let's quickly go to preferences. It's a nice shortcut, control and comma or command and comma on Mac. And if you now go into the tab record, warp and launch, here you have a bunch of settings uh, related to warping. And if you're just starting out, you can copy my settings. Basically, I don't want auto warping. Uh, I don't want uh, automatic looping. And also by default, we want to warp it in the complex mode. But we'll get into the specifics of all of this in a moment. Okay, so if you've got these settings, you can close this window. We've got a bunch of uh, MIDI and audio tracks. I'm just going to disable the MIDI and audio tracks. Then uh, we just have one audio track left. Uh, actually, we can go into the arrangement mode. Just click and tab. Here I have a vocal sample. You can just drop it right onto any audio track. Basically any sample, any audio file, even uh, somewhere on your hard drive, you can just drag and drop it right onto uh, any audio track. And it's going to import the audio. But now the question is whether this audio is playing in sync with our track. And here we have the track set to 120 BPM. And as you can see here in the name of this file, uh, this one is actually in 122 BPM. So when we play this, it's going to be faster than our track. And warping basically allows us to stretch the audio to make it fit the tempo of our project. Okay, so if you've imported any sample, you can just double click it or you can go into the clip view here. First of all, you can see that warping is disabled now. We can't do anything with this file. And if we enable it, we've chosen complex mode as the default mode. So that's what Live did. And warping works through something called warp markers. So if you double click anywhere on this dark gray bar here, you can create a warp marker and then you can drag it around and stretch your audio. And this is really handy if you'd like to extend or make something faster. So this is called a warp marker, these yellow markers that you uh, create by double clicking. But if we delete this, just clicking and pressing backspace, if we zoom in, these are called invisible warp markers. So you can actually drag these around as well, or you can move these around by holding shift. And these are going to be very, very useful, especially for warping entire tracks. So these are the two basic types of uh, warp markers. Let's for now just delete this entire sample and let's start off with probably the most useful technique, uh, which is importing an entire track into Ableton. This is going to allow you to now import a reference track uh, for mixing and mastering or uh, maybe to create your own DJ set or a mix. Yeah, definitely you will want your tracks warped so that you can control the tempo and make sure it's in time with uh, whatever you have going on in your project. Okay, so I'm going to drag a full track inside Ableton. I'm just dragging it right here. We don't have the BPM of this track written and often you won't have a BPM of your track. So the tempo uh, written in the file, uh, it's going to be a bit easier if you know it, for example, from Beatport or some other source, but absolutely it's not a necessity. If you've got a regular four to the floor track or basically if the tempo doesn't change over time, it's very, very easy to warp the track. Okay. So so let's click on warp and uh, now it's enabled and let's listen. So we have a sort of acoustic intro here and the kick drum starts over here. So the first thing you need to do is to find the drum beat. In my opinion, you can easily, for example, find the first kick drum. If it's a four to the floor pattern, then usually you will have four kick drums at the beginning and this is going to make it much, much easier. I wouldn't recommend starting uh, warping from this start of the clip if it doesn't include drums. Okay, so uh, here's our first kick drum. We uh, I've zoomed in and this is the first invisible warp marker. All you need to do at the beginning is just right click on it and go to set 1.1.1 here. This basically uh, sets the starting point of our clip to this first kick drum. Next thing you need to select another kick drum, for example, uh, here. This one, this is the third kick drum. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's off 
the grid. So it probably should fit here into 1.3. So we can just drag this to the right. And now we can turn on the metronome and we can check whether what we have is actually playing. Okay, and as you can hear, we are already getting out of sync with the metronome. If we listen to some part further, it's probably going to be even worse. Okay, so this is totally out of sync, and then the further we go, the worse it's gonna be. Uh, now we need to select another kick drum somewhere further, maybe this one. And now we can move this invisible warp marker with shift, and uh, for example, here is where the transients of the kick starts, and then we can drag it over. And now let's listen to this part. Okay, it's more or less in sync. Let's listen to another part. Okay, maybe we can also move this part. Now let's listen to another part. Let's maybe do a small adjustment here. Okay, and let's listen to the beginning. And yeah, we have the track warped. And what about the beginning of the track? You can just basically take this start marker and put it at the front. And now the track is warped and you can play it from the beginning with the metronome. And then we can check the middle. And the end. And it works. So here's how you warp uh, tracks, full tracks actually, if you don't know their BPM. Now you can actually see it's in 123 BPM. So if we knew that, and that would be much easier, we could just enter it at the beginning. <laughs> Life would basically warp it correctly from the beginning. But as we didn't know it, we needed to mess around with the warp markers and just uh, tell Live how to warp it correctly. And all of this happens because Live is usually better at warping uh, shorter samples. It kind of gets confused when you import a full track into Ableton. Uh, you just need to give Live a bit of help and uh, manually align the transients of kick drums usually. And uh, it's pretty easy if uh, the track has a stable tempo. Okay, so let's go into another example. Here we have a bunch of vocal samples from our vocals pack. Run away with me just one more night. We can, for example, take this sample. And let's take the first uh, example. Here in the clip name, we have 122 BPM written. So the first thing we need to do is set our project to that tempo. We can just drop this inside Ableton and uh, you can see that it ends perfectly on the beat. You can just enable warp and it's going to play in time. Run away with me just one more night. Tell me, can you see the open sky? And usually if you find sample packs, uh, most of the samples and loops are going to be labeled with the BPM. That's going to make it much easier for you. But what if we didn't know the BPM? For instance, let's go back to 120. We can just import it right away. Run away with me just one more night. And you can see now it doesn't end here on the beat. What should we do now? We don't have a kick drum. How are we going to warp this? A nice guideline could be actually the length of the clip itself. If we enable warp, hold shift and drag the end of the clip, we can actually move it around here. Here you can see that it probably is going to be ending here at 19. So if we just extend this, you can see now in the BPM section, it says 122 and this is the correct tempo. But for example, let's say the clip was shorter or it wasn't cut regularly to the end of the bar. What could we do then? So in that case, let's listen to the clip itself. Run away with me just one more night. Tell me, can you see the open sky? Let's pre. Okay, so I think the one is going to be here on the pre. Let's pre. Okay, so what if we go to 1.1.1 here? Maybe this part could be the two. Pretend to be not only friends for the weekend. And maybe this part could be the three. Let's test with the metronome. Pretend to be not only friends for the weekend. Run away with me tonight. Okay, uh, maybe we can check with the rest of the clip. Tell me, can you see the open sky? I think this fits. Uh, let's check the beginning. Run away with me just one more night. 
Tell me. Okay, so I think this should be a bit dragged to the back. Run away with me just one more night. Tell me, can you see the open sky? Let's pretend to be not only friends for the weekend. Run away with me tonight. Yeah, so with just another warp marker here, I think we've warped it. It's very close to the real tempo, 121.73. And it's probably because we are not uh, mathematically precise. You can see here we have this bit at the beginning. Also, it's a usually a good guess to just uh, set it to 122 BPM. And uh, yeah, in this case, uh, we'd need 1.1.1 to be right here. You can actually select warp from here straight. And this is going to remove all the other warp markers. 122 BPM. Run away with me just one more night. Tell me, can you see the open sky? Let's pretend to be not only friends for the weekend. Run away with me tonight. Okay, in my opinion, this, uh, yeah, this works. One last tip, if you are warping vocals in particular and uh, you'd like more control over the timbre of the voice, especially if you're pitching around the voice or uh, doing uh, tempo adjustments, it's usually beneficial to mess around with the complex pro mode and mess around with the formants and also the envelope and this can uh, really change the way your vocal sounds. Seven semitones. Run away with me just one more night. Run away with me just one more night. This, these are just some examples of adjusting the formants here. Okay, so now let's delete the sample and let's take a drum loop. I'm going to take a simple kick drum because I also wanted to show you another warp mode. Uh, actually, we can, if we know the BPM here, we can just set it to 126 and uh, yeah, just import the file, warp, and it's at 126. Okay, let's say we want to play at 63 BPM, half the tempo all the kicks get really stretched out. And this is probably not how you want your kicks to sound. A cool mode for these kind of adjustments is the beats mode, because this is now going to preserve the transients. So every time the kick hits, uh, you have this transient here, the, an invisible warp marker. And with every of these, uh, it's going to detect, oh, it's a drum sound playing, and it's going to uh, not stretch it out, but retain as much of the original as possible. So let's play this. It's the back and forth mode here. We can actually select the first one. Uh, this is what I usually use. Yeah, and now it's way different comparing this to this. It's the original kick drum once again, but with half the tempo. You can do this with drum breaks. You can do this with all kinds of drum samples. If life uh, detects the transients, it's going to allow you to speed up or slow down the clip without losing uh, the original timbre of the drums. And we can actually also uh, reduce the transient length here. Yeah, so this, this just adjusts how long each chop uh, is going to last. Okay, so this would be the beats mode. I also wanted to show you something else. Maybe we can take some hats, 126 BPM, and let's import it, warp it, and we have it warped. So this is how it works. Now, for example, let's say uh, we don't know the BPM of this one and we import it at 120, but it's 26. In fact, uh, you can usually also enable warp, hold shift and just drag it around. And you can usually stretch it to uh, a full bar because usually samples are just exported using uh, like a bar or two bars. And uh, let's actually see, we have 126 precisely. So. And uh, if we, for example, now wanted to uh, actually play this in a much lower tempo. So this is now really stretched out. And to avoid this, uh, actually, we can just select the beats mode because as you can see, uh, the invisible warp markers are nicely placed on each of the hats. We can just select this mode. Yeah, but it's a much uh, better version than this stretched out uh, option. So make sure to experiment, especially with the beats mode, the complex and the complex pro mode. I hope you will find this warping tutorial helpful. Make sure to check out our music production academy with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres. And if you'd like to learn Life 12 with all the foundations of music production, 
check out the beginner to advanced life 12 start to finish course. Make sure to also check out the everything bundle collector's edition, which includes all of the courses, sound packs and project files in our store. All links you'll find in the video description. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write a comment and I will see you in the next ones.